If you have a DSLR, stop struggling, get your autofocus lens calibration done, and start taking sharper images. Simple as that. Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. Thank you so much for joining me once again for Tea Time. Today we have some misty morning. Really, really, really good, love it. So, what are you drinking with me? You have some coffee, some tea, what is it? Anyways guys, today, today's gonna be all about autofocus lens calibration. I've been hearing so much about this and I've been working on autofocus lens calibration for just about 10 years now. Just so you know, I invented the autofocus lens calibration tool called the Focus Pyramid. And this was back like 2010, 2011. It's being used in schools all over the world. It is a tool that just simply works and it's very low cost. Now, I wanna tell you something today that a lot of definitely amateurs don't know and a lot of pros don't get, right? And the bottom line here is, is when you're doing any type of work with a DSLR, and you're attaching a lens to a DSLR body, there is a variance where the lens and the body come together. And that variance changes over time. That's why the camera manufacturers give us something called AF fine tuning, or with Canon, it's called autofocus micro tuning, micro adjustment, whatever. Everyone calls it something different. The bottom line is you need to be able to adjust the lens to the body. If you don't, you end up with out of focus images. Now, how this all came about is when I was originally starting like to shoot more of the professional gear, I noticed that my little cameras like this would pull better focus than my $5,000 rig, you know, like a $2,500 lens and a $2,500 camera. And the time I was done, I'm like, wow, I just, I don't understand why is the focus off? You know, I took the picture, I dialed in exactly, I, I focused right in on the model's eyelashes, and then when I looked in post-production, the back of her ear was in focus, or the tip of her nose was more in focus than her eyelashes. What? Okay, it was very frustrating. I got a $5,000 plus $6,000 rig that is taking worse pictures than a little $300 camera. Now, a lot of you guys don't understand this, okay? And I wanted to just bring this out so people just simply get it. And more importantly, more importantly, I wanna show you how even though you send your lens back for calibration and cleaning, it doesn't matter. You still need to set your autofocus calibration in your camera. It is necessary. And I'm gonna show you with this one. So what I did is I, went and did some autofocus lens calibration. I'm gonna show that to you right now on the focus pyramid, all right? With this lens, when it came back from CPS, they take your equipment, clean it, calibrate it, do whatever they need to do, and send it back to you for either free or for a little bit of cha-chang. And this one cost me probably about 300 bucks. But anyways, it is a 24 to 70, 2.8. Now. Let's go ahead and jump right into this so you can see what we're doing. I'm just gonna do a quick calibration. Bear in mind, this footage is really shaky. I just did this really quick, but I wanna show you guys because I think it's so, so important. I just, people don't get this. They just don't get it, and I, I, I just, I wanna make you aware of this. So let me start out by showing you that in the camera, it's set to plus eight as far as the AF micro adjustment or the calibration. So. When I sent the lens in, it was set to plus eight to be able to get a perfectly in focus image. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to set it to zero, plus zero, we're going to zero it out because we know that the lens was already calibrated from Canon and sent back to us, clean and calibrated, perfectly set to neutral, let's say, all right? So we're going to set the camera also to that neutral point, which is zero and see what we get. So as you can see here, even though we're set now to zero and the lens is perfectly calibrated, it is still slightly out of focus. Now, how can we tell? Most people would look at this and say, oh, obviously we need to get that zero, zero line in focus. And it looks pretty good. Well, the easiest way to see or to try to get zero, zero in focus is by looking at what is out of focus. 
If we look at the 20 at the top and the 20 at the bottom, are they equally out of focus? Then if we look at the 15 on the top and the 15 on the bottom, are they equally out of focus? And then the 10 and the 10, so on and so forth. By looking at what is out of focus and being able to match all right, that 20 to the 20 and the 15 to the 15, that's how we can know that that zero, zero point dead center will be in focus. It just makes it much easier. And as you can see here, it is not in focus. The 15 at the top and the 15 in the bottom are not equally as out of focus. By looking at this, we're getting a little bit of back focusing going on. So what we're gonna do is maybe we'll set this to negative two autofocus calibration and see what that does. Now remember, my menu system is gonna be different than your menu system, all right? This is a Canon, you might have an icon, whatever it is, check your camera manual and see exactly how to set that autofocus micro adjustment or that AF fine tuning or whatever your camera manufacturer calls it. So we're gonna set this to negative two and take another quick picture. Now as we can see, negative two is definitely getting it closer. The 15 and the 15 are definitely better than they were a second ago, but they're still not right. We can see that that 15 at the top is a little bit sharper than the 15 at the bottom. And the same thing with the 10 and the 10. So minus two is just simply not enough. So let's go ahead and set this to maybe negative four. No, you know what? Let's do negative five. Now let's take a look at this, see what that looks like. Now, as you can see, the 20 and the 20 are almost perfectly out of focus. The 15 and the 15 are almost perfectly equally out of focus. So when we look at this, we know that that zero, zero spot is almost dead on. And this is definitely where we need to be. So as you can see here, even though we had our lens cleaned and calibrated right from Canon. Even though we did that, we still had to go and set our autofocus lens calibration in the camera to be able to take a perfectly clear photo of what we are taking a picture of. So we need negative five to be able to get this combination in focus. So what we pointed at, and we hear that beep beep, and you have that little red square, that spot is in focus and nothing behind it, back focus, or nothing in front of it, front focus, okay? So, negative five. Now remember, before we sent that lens in for calibration and for cleaning, it was plus eight. So you see the complete variance. Now that we have a neutral, let's say, lens that's perfectly to spec, the camera itself is slightly off where they come together by that negative five amount. Now remember, most of these cameras will allow you to do plus 20, negative 20, right around there. Maybe plus 25, negative 25, and that is it. Once you hit that amount, you will need to, at that point, send that lens back in for calibration. Or, if that doesn't help, you need to send both of them, the camera body and the lens in for calibration. Because at that point, it could be actually both that are causing the problems, all right? so. I hope this helps a little bit. I just, there's so many folks out there I really feel bad for that just have been just getting blurry images all the time, just like I was, okay? Blurry images all the time and just can't figure it out. Can't figure it out. Pick up that camera, point it at, let's say a, a hair, all right, take a picture of that hair and then later on in post-production see that the hair is out of focus and everything behind it is in focus. Or the hair is out of focus and everything in front of it is out of focus. That is just simply aggravating, so aggravating. And what exasperates it is when you shoot wide open. Let's say this is a 2.8 lens. If you shoot at 2.8, you're gonna end up with a smaller area that will be in focus, all right? So your variance is going to really be accentuated. If you take images at F11, at F16, you're not gonna see it as much because there's a lot more that will be in focus. But as soon as you start shooting lenses wide open, like professionals like myself do, you're really going to see the problem. And the worst part is, guys, is you don't see it until you're in post-production when it's too late and you're zoomed in there at like two, three, 400% and you're like, oh my God, this would have been a perfect picture, but her eye is out of focus. 
what am I gonna do now? Then you go into Photoshop, you try faking the sharpness on the eye when it's just simply not sharp and it just, it just makes things just horrible. Get that autofocus right in camera at the time of capture and you don't have to worry about it later, all right? It is so, so important. I don't care if you're an amateur or if you're a professional. If you take a picture, you want it to be fantastic. You don't want it to be mediocre. There's no reason why a five, $6,000 setup should look worse than a three, $400 setup, okay? It shouldn't be, okay? It shouldn't be. And when you use a focus pyramid, autofocus lens calibration tool, you know that you're going to be able to dial in your lens to your camera perfect. So you're always going to get rock solid, sharp images every single time. That is so, so important. So many people out there are not getting the value out of their glass. They're spending hundreds, sometimes thousands of dollars for lenses. And when they look at the pictures, they look like crap. All right. They are out of focus. And it's just sad. It is just simply sad. When you can literally just pick up one of these things over on Amazon or B&H Photo and Video or over on my site, jchristina.com. It's like 25 bucks, $24 and change or something. And literally all of your lenses will be perfectly dialed into your camera body. I mean, it's just crazy not to do it. Remember guys, each camera and each lens will be dialed in together. So when I take this lens off this camera, okay, and I stick on, let's say a 50 millimeter, if I calibrated that specific 50 millimeter to this body, the body will say, hey, this is a 50 millimeter 1.4. We've calibrated this lens before because it keeps that data and it'll automatically adjust for you. So maybe that 50 millimeter is plus 10 all right, to get it perfectly in line. And then we go and take our 24 to 70 that we just calibrated, stick that on. It says, hey, we remember that is supposed to be negative five autofocus calibration. It then sets itself to negative five. So every one of your lenses are always dead on. The camera remembers it. It's put into its memory and that's it. That's all you have to do. Now, like I said at the beginning, I still do my autofocus lens calibration once a month, every other month, but I always do it before I go out to an important gig. Why? I don't have time to screw around, all right? I need to get the shot when the shot appears, period. I can't later on go into post-production and say, oh my God, my focus is off, all right? So many times in the past, my focus was off and then searching for an image that was in focus and having to shoot 10 times the amount of shots than I have to now. Now I point it at the model, I focus in on her eyes, I pull the trigger, I know when I go into post-production, it is gonna be dead on, period. End of story. So. I hope this is of some help to some of you guys out there. Maybe some of you don't even know that this even exists and you're just struggling with this forever, for years now. Well, if you have a DSLR, stop struggling, get your autofocus lens calibration done and start taking sharper images. Simple as that, really super simple. So, listen guys, I'm out of here. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you have, please give me a thumbs up. That would really be helpful. Share this content with your friends, family, colleagues, whoever you think might need it. Someone else that's having problems with their kit that they spent four, five, six grand on and they don't know why this stuff is out of focus. Share it. So once again, throw me a big thumbs up. That would be absolutely stellar smash that subscribe button so you can get all my content when it becomes available and click the bell icon so when it is available you will be notified of it and finally head over to my website jchristina.com where you can find all the photography tools that i've invented for you and me over the years and hopefully there's something there that you might like and if there is please pick it up and support me so guys if you're a subscriber and you want one of these focus pyramids, autofocus lens calibration tools, or anything else that I have, use promo code YT20 at checkout. 
Once again, go to jchristina.com, use promo code YT20 at checkout. You're gonna get 20% off everything that's in your shopping cart. This is a way for me to say thank you for you even being here and lasting to the end of this video. All right. Also, don't forget to check out our creative discord server over at community.jchristina.com and pick up my free ebook, how to make sharper images, really great tips, 10 great tips that a lot of pros have even forgotten about or don't even know. So check that out. It's free over at jchristina.com forward slash ebook. I'm out of here for yet another vlog. Thank you so much for coming. We'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys, and many blessings to each and every one of you.